In this video, I'm going to go through some of the basics of how we denote matrices and work with matrices specifically for quantum mechanics using the McIntyre book. So these are matrices. We have multiple entries arranged in some pattern. Now for quantum mechanics, we're normally going to be interested in square matrices where the number of columns equals the number of rows. So this first one up here, which is a two by two, and this one, which is a three by three. Now notice that these first two just have simple integer entries in the matrix, but in quantum mechanics, we're going to be working with some more complicated things. So for instance, we're going to have variables show up uh, very often within the matrices themselves. We're going to have complex matrices, which means that you have imaginary numbers. And we're going to have values like that, e to the i pi. So hard, complicated things can appear in matrices, and we can also have values like this, irrational numbers. So be ready for our matrices to be more complicated. Now, the other thing we have to do is actually talk about the notation. So I'm going to be using the same uh, notation as the McIntyre book, and it's really important to know what the notation means so that you're using the right symbols and approaching the equations in the right way. So for instance, to use a capital letter, that's going to be the matrix itself. Now, note that in some books you might have bold, things like that. It's really hard to write bold, so just use a capital letter. Now, if we want to refer to a specific entry in the matrix, there's two ways to do that. One is going to be to use lowercase entries. So, for instance, we can say that this entry is equal to, for instance, lowercase a. And one of the ways that you might uh, see this written, for instance, is to just say that you have a B, C, D, lowercase entries. And then I could say that A equals 1, C equals 0, so forth. So try to reserve uppercase letters for the matrix itself, lowercase letters for the individual entries. Now, a better way to do this is to actually index, using subscripts, the values themselves. And what's a little bit tricky here is getting the order right. And so in this case, we can use A, subscript 1, 1. So now we have the uh, row and then the column. So this first one is row, the second one is column. So when we move over one, that's then going to still be the first row, second column. First row, third column. The next one, second row, first column, and, and so on. And so this is another way to really index that matrix, where now the capital letter that you're using here matches the overall name of the matrix, and then these subscripts are telling you about rows and columns. So please make sure that you have the order right of the rows and columns, um, otherwise people won't necessarily agree on what A underscore 1, 2 is if you're thinking about rows and columns differently.